morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our new Lenten series. Um, this uh, is a special short service, and afterwards everyone is invited to join us for lunch over in Anthony Lounge. Uh, we don't take an offering during this service, but there will be um, plates on the table for you to, to, to make an offering at luncheon if you so choose. Next Tuesday, Thursday will uh, be our last Lenten series lunch, uh, luncheon and service, and um, the Reverend Dr. Steve Wales will be preaching at that. He is not here today because he's on his way back from Mexico, where he's been this week. Tomorrow night, Friday night, at 7 o'clock, you're welcome to join us for the um, Walk with Jesus, which is hosted by uh, Jack Evans, which is documentaries and movies and discussion about the life of Jesus and the context in which he lived and, and died. Also tonight is uh, the Bible study where they're doing a series on the, the Jesus Diaries, which are personal meditations about our relationship with God and with Jesus. You're welcome to come to any or all of those. Now let us begin worship with our opening prayer. Christ is with us. Christ, Christ is, is in our midst. midst. Let us pray. Loving God, we are blessed to be your people, to be together today, and to prayerfully enter your presence. We are thankful for your holy word, your guidance, and your relief in our ability and our courage to walk on the path of Jesus. May your name forever be called. Amen. And now if you would stand if you are able, and let's join our hearts and voices together in number 403, My Hope is Built on My Life.
accept that love gives us courage to face the wrongs that we have done and the mistakes that we have made. We have hurt others and we have hurt ourselves. Sometimes we have failed to ask forgiveness. We confess our failings to you, trusting in your abiding love and forgiveness. We pray in the name of Jesus, our brother and our friend. Amen. Let us be in silence as we reflect on this past week. If there is anything that we said or did that we regret, let us confess it in our hearts. If there is something that we didn't do or we should have done, let us give it to God now.
Now the fact that this prayer was originally in Aramaic is important. Hebrew is the formal language of the, of the temple. But Hebrew, the language of the Torah, was not a language spoken by the common person. The language of the street was Aramaic, another Semitic language related to Hebrew that was acquired in Israel during its Babylonian exile. Now Jesus prayed in Aramaic. He prayed casually, even conversationally with God. His prayers do not reflect any of the set forms of prayers of his day. There's no blessing of the nation, land, or temple. The prayers of Jesus instead are expressions of personal concern. With the Lord's Prayer, Jesus gave his disciples a formal prayer in the language of the street, the common language. In doing so, he removes prayer from the liturgical sphere of sacred language and places it right in the middle of everyday life. Now in this particular verse, forgive us our debts, Jesus is making the assumption of universal sinfulness. The Bible in general makes that assumption, and so does John the Baptist, St. Paul, and centuries of scholars and theologians. New Testament scholar Eugene Bourne writes that Jesus assumes every person who comes before the Holy One in prayer comes as a guilty one who needs God's forgiveness. He adds that sin is thought of as a debt owed to God, a debt that one cannot repay. So what exactly is sin? The great Christian reformer Martin Luther defined sin as turning from God. Sin does not refer primarily to sinful acts, but to one's basic condition as turned from God towards oneself. I personally agree with Luther that sin is willfully not doing what we know that God expects. It is rebellious opposition to the divine purpose. Theologian Stanley Gretz writes that sin is our inability to be what God desires us to be, our failure to fulfill God's intention for us. Yet Martin Luther also reminds us, no sin can ever separate us from Christ no matter how awful we are to others and to ourselves, we are forgiven children of a loving God. However, this is the yes but, <laughs> human forgiveness and divine forgiveness are intertwined as we see in this verse of the Lord's Prayer and in the verses which follow the prayer itself. After the where we stop praying the Lord's Prayer, in the Bible, there are verses 14 and 15, which read, For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your trespasses. And here, once again, we enter into the parallel universe of the now and not yet. If you remember from our Lenten service from the second week, the now and not yet is a time when something is among us, but not fully actualized. We already have the unmerited, unconditional forgiveness of God. At the same time, we don't yet have the full and final forgiveness of God which we will receive in a judgment at the end of time. New Testament theologian Joachim Jeremias writes that in this prayer, Jesus instructs his disciples to ask not only for mercy in the hour of the last judgment, 
but ask that God might grant them forgiveness now, today, the now and the yet to come. Now this verse is unlike the rest of the Lord's Prayer. You may not have noticed it. I didn't until I started working on this sermon. This is the only line in which we humans are involved. All the rest of the prayer is asking for God to act. Jeremiah writes that this striking reference to human activity is an indication of how important this point is to Jesus. The word as, as we forgive those, does not imply a comparison. How could we compare our forgiveness to God's mercy? Rather, Jeremiah writes, the as implies a cause and effect. With these words, we remind ourselves of our own need to forgive. Jesus again and again declared this very point, that you cannot ask God for forgiveness if you are not prepared to forgive. God will forgive only if we are ready to forgive. This verse, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, is a verse of confession. This is not a moment when we are trying to sway a reluctant God, or we are pointing out our mistakes to an inattentive God. No. We are expressing our own need before God and speaking of our dependence on God's love. This prayer, then, is a model for opening our hearts and articulating our deepest convictions of faith. So once again, Jesus is not only speaking the unexpected, he's giving us the radical gift of being able to speak from our very souls, to open the core of our being and embrace our wholeness within the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 We remember that this is not the table of First Church or the UCC. This is the table of Jesus. All all are welcome here. Let us pray together the invitation to communion, followed by the Lord's Prayer, which is on the other side of the bulletin. And for this Lenten service, we are praying the one in bold face, which is to, from the New Zealand Prayer Book. So let us pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, we come to this your table, not because we must, but because we may. We come not to make a case for our goodness, but because of your mercy and love. We come not to make a statement, but to welcome your presence into our own lives. We pray that receiving you today, your word, and this sacrament, our lives may be further transformed into your own likeness. May others who see us see your likeness in us. We pray in the words from the listeners of the teachings. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God in whom is heaven, may the hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your reign and commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, be us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and testing, Strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power of his love, now and forever. Amen.
personnel as we go forward, following community, if you wish, to join together in fellowship and, and soup and bread. May the love of God uplift your heart. May the courage of Christ Jesus sustain you. And may the Holy Spirit fill you with forgiveness and service for others this day and forever. Amen. 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 Amen.